Should the Dodgers emulate what the Rangers did? We'll talk about that. We'll talk about Corey Seager and if he should still be a Dodger and if things would be different. And the NLCS is going to a game seven. Do you have any rooting interest? We'll talk about all that and more. So let's get Locked on Dodgers. You are Locked on Dodgers, your daily Los Angeles Dodgers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Yo, 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 Dodger fans. Welcome to Locked On Dodgers. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, the number one local sports daily podcast network. Locked On, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. This is the daily podcast covering the Los Angeles Dodgers, bringing you the smart fans perspective on our boys in blue. You can find us wherever you find podcasts on YouTube simply by searching for Locked on Dodgers. And if you never want to miss a day and if you want to become an everyday or the easiest way to do so is to listen and watch every day. And you can help yourself in doing that by subscribing wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. If this is your first time listening and watching, I'm Vince Samperio, usually joined by co-host Jeff Snyder, but uh, he covered me yesterday. So I'm covering today. And Jeff and I are both lifelong Dodger fans that have – been watching the Dodgers our whole life. We've covered the team. We've been able to be in press boxes, locker room, interview players, things of that nature. We're not quite insiders. Uh, we're just two Dodger fans that uh, believe that we're here to bring some knowledgeable and rational takes about the Dodgers and maybe sometimes irrational or maybe not as knowledgeable, if, uh, depending on how you feel. So that's what we're here to do, and that's what I'm here to do today. Uh, the Dodgers are not in the postseason, so we're not – directly talking about them in uh in in all senses although today a couple of the the, the topics are you know, related to the dodgers just uh by way of what's going on in the postseason so the texas rangers smacked the houston astros in game seven in order to advance to the world series it was never really a game uh, the rangers scored three in the first and just kept piling on from there by the end of the game. Uh, right behind home plate, there wasn't many Astro or any Astro fans left. And, uh, you know, as Dodger fans, we're always probably going to feel a type of way towards the Astros. And, uh, you know, rightfully so, because you know, Dodgers would have two World Series championships in the last few years if it wasn't for them. Even though most of the players aren't there anymore, you know, it's really just Altuve and Bregman and Verlander again. But it's more about for me. It's more about the fans. Like I don't want their fans to be happy just because like most of them probably didn't handle uh, the way things went down with the most grace. Uh, but you know, either way, Rangers. Uh, I, I jokingly tweeted last night that hey, the Dodgers did make the World Series. Rangers have a bunch of old Dodgers on there. Number one, Corey Seager, who we'll talk about in the next segment. Max Scherzer, who you know probably not as Loved, definitely not as Corey Seager. Josh Bores, who was with the Dodgers a long time ago and is still chugging along and is one of the high leverage arms for the Rangers this season. You got Nate Eovaldi, who, again, was with the Dodgers early in his career, never was who he is now as a, as a postseason pitcher. And then you got – there's another one that I'll remember. But, yeah, it, it, it's – Good to see for baseball and, and for the Rangers. Uh, the Rangers were a 100-loss team two years ago. They spent some big money. They spelt, they still lost in 90 games last year, but they continued to build. They let some of the young guys come up. They made some trades at the deadline. And, you know, if you were in, uh, uh, someone from MLB, you'd be like, yeah, this is what we want. Like, the, the they, they tanked a little bit in the sense that they weren't – they just weren't good. Um but they spent money. They made trades at the deadline and some of that, you know, prospect capital came up and helped. Evan Carter has been really good. Josh Jung has been really good for them in terms of rookies. You know, they, they signed Corey Seager and Mark Semyon. Semyon didn't have a great series, but he's contributed for them to get to this point. 
Corey Seager, you know, continues his streakiness in the postseason. But when he's hot, he's hot. And, you know, last night he had three hits, including a homer in the first inning, kind of setting the tone for that game. So it, it's good to see. Uh, on our side, it's can the Dodgers learn anything from the Rangers? And I, yes and no. It, it's hard. It's going to always – for us, it's always going to be hard to speak in certainties when it comes to postseason because there are no certainties in postseason. And, you know, that that's, I think, the point we try to get across is that all this stuff that people or fans want, if the Dodgers did it, it doesn't guarantee that they're going to make the World Series. It doesn't guarantee – that they'd even make it past the first round. Like, we don't know. Uh, we can hope. And, you know, if if your goal is to just give the Dodgers the best chance to advance in October, then, you know, that's a different conversation. But if your goal is, oh, win the World Series, I don't know if there's a foolproof plan for that. But when it comes to the Rangers, I mean, the one thing, you know, spending money isn't something the Dodgers are against, although they've done it differently than the Dodgers have. The Dodgers don't normally sign high-priced free agents. Um, you know, they have, you know, Freddie Freeman and to a lesser extent Trevor Bauer have been somewhat high-priced, uh, not quite as high as Corey Seager got. They signed Mookie Betts to that, but after trading for him, not after – straight up signing him. We know they've had offers out in the past to guys like Garrett Cole and Bryce Harper, Aaron Judge maybe, but they've never been the type of money that is going to get you that star. And, you know, it's one of those things where do they need to spend that kind of money to get that type of star? I would say if it's the right person, yes. And, you know, Mookie Betts, wasn't a free agent. So when they signed him, you know, he didn't have offers from everyone else. And I don't know if, you know, what those offers would look like if, if he was open to every other team, but, you know, Corey Seager, the only way you're going to get Corey Seager was with the deal they kind of gave him, it, it appeared. And, you know, Marcus Simeon got, you know, big money too. And they signed to Grom to big money. And it didn't obviously work out this year for them, but Hey, they're in, they're, they're in October's or they're in the world series. So I think, you know, on the right person, yes. And you look at, you know, this year's crop of free agents and it's Otani and then kind of everyone else. I don't know if there's anyone to spend that kind of big money on this offseason, uh, but, you know, it's certainly a thought to have. And then, you know, going for it at the deadline, like they went for Scherzer, they went for Jordan Montgomery, you know, they went for Chapman a little bit before the actual deadline. And, you know, I don't know. I personally don't know what they gave up at this particular juncture, but I don't think any Ranger fans care what they gave up. And I think that's almost where we're at with the Dodgers. You know, Dodger fans are, are kind of fickle in that sense where they want all these guys at the deadline, but then they also want to keep some of the young guys most sometimes. And it's like, oh, it's not going to happen. It's not going to always work out that way. But, you know, it, it's kind of different because like Max Scherzer is a one or two type. Uh, and then he ended up, getting hurt, not really pitching and wasn't effective in his first postseason start and was okay in this start. Uh, you know, Jordan Montgomery ended up being the best of the bunch, ended up coming back on short rest to pitch a couple innings in this game. And, you know, you I, you never know what you're going to get. But I do think that there is some method to the madness in the sense of going after guys that can help you out and, 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 you know, maybe overpaying sometimes or maybe even going after, you know, the tier twos instead of the tier ones or going after both. Like they went after a tier one and a tier two and, and you know, it worked out for them. So, again, this isn't some full plan, but the question is, can the Dodgers learn anything from the Rangers? I think they can. I think it's to spend when the spending is right. And I think it's to make deals uh, when there's players out there that can potentially help you get to the World Series. It, it's you're never going to trade for someone and say, oh, we're guaranteed to make the World Series. But if you can trade for someone and say, we have a better chance than we did yesterday of making the World Series, then I think you got to take those chances sometimes. And I think that's what they can learn. And and I think the other thing that us fans can learn uh, is that you don't need to be raw. raw. Bruce Bochy is not raw, raw. Bruce Bochy made decisions in this series that didn't end up working out. But then, you know, his players came through for him. His offense hit the ball. His, you know, pitchers made outs. His defense made outs. And I think, you know, 
obviously there's something to it, Bruce Bochy. This is the third time he's taken a team to a World Series. But again, it's not some of the criticisms that Dave Roberts gets, you know, he's very similar in this in the sense of being calm and, you know, for the most part, putting guys in situations where they should do well and sometimes they don't do well. And, you know, Jose Leclerc gave up the game uh, in game five, uh, but ended up, you know, coming back and coming back from that and, and working his way through and being good. So that's what they can learn from the Rangers. Should Corey Seager still be with the Dodgers and this whole postseason might be a little bit different. That's what we're going to get into next. So make sure to keep it locked on Dodgers. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. October baseball is here and almost over. So don't wait too long to make your postseason debut with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Get it right in time for the World Series. You can start looking up the Rangers and seeing what kind of stats they got and seeing what you want to check out. And you'll have to wait till after tonight to see if it's going to be the Phillies or Diamondbacks that they're playing against. One thing we do know is the series starts in Texas. So join FanDuel today and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to create your new account. Then you can get it in on the action from the first pitch until the final out. Bet on everything from strikeouts to home runs to who will win the game. You can get pretty granular on there. You can, you know, total bases. You can get strikeouts. You can get, you know, different things. How many hits? More than one hit. There's a lot of things you get into. And, you know, obviously the the higher the odds, the more money you have a chance to win. So go check out FanDuel right now. And if you don't want to wait the whole game, you can predict what will happen next with quick bets. So, you know, hey, he, this guy's going to get a hit. This guy's going to get out. This guy's going to strike out. Quick bets. You know, feed your feed your that that quick that quick twitch action that you want on there. So head over to fanduelcom slash locked on right now, and remember you'll get up to two hundred dollars in bonus bets guaranteed when you step up to the plate this postseason. Make every moment more with Fanduel, official sports betting partner of MLB. I want to thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen of the day every day. Make sure to. Check us out wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. Make sure to become an everydayer by listening every day. Make sure to tell your friends and family about us and uh, where they can find us. And remember, Sirius XM has got you for games if you want to listen to the World Series or for next season if you want to listen to the Dodgers. Sirius XM or the SXM app. All right, so let's talk Corey Seager because obviously he's now in the World Series and throughout the postseason I've seen, you know, Things about, oh, the Dodgers should have kept Corey Seager or the Dodgers, you know, would be different with Corey Seager and, you know, things of that nature. And while I do believe things might have been different with Corey Seager, it's not a guarantee because, you know, I think Dodgers, maybe Dodger fans misremember or choose to remember certain things about players sometimes. Um, and don't always think about the other side of things. You know, Corey Seager, great hitter. You know, the the one thing with the Dodgers is that he, you know, got hurt a few times. But beyond that, you know, with the Dodgers, he was a great hitter. He he hit over 300 as a Dodger in his or just under 300, 297 OPS plus of 131. You know, a bunch of doubles, bunch of homers. He he was good with the Dodgers in, in his time. And like I said, his game sometimes, but you know, sometimes that happens. Uh, but I think what it, what the Dodger fans are really clamoring for is postseason. Oh, Corey Seager can hit in the postseason. And, you know, his postseason was a mixed bag of sorts. Obviously 2020, we remember, uh, and, and he was really good in 2020 and 2020 throughout the series, you know, he, he only had one hit in the, in the series against the Brewers, but then after that, against the Padres, he had 364 against the Braves, he had 310 and in the world series, he had 400, you know, he hit eight home runs in, in that postseason. So we remember that. And, and yes, he's somebody that can carry your team in October, but he's also somebody that hit 188 in 2015 World Series. And, you know, he was young then. Okay. Next year, 2016 in, against the Nationals in that series that they won, 
you know, he hit a couple home runs, but he also hit 130 overall. Um, but the home runs are, are, you know, definitely what matters. Uh, you know, he hit well in the NLCS in 2016. He hit well in the 2017 NLDS. Then he didn't play in the CS, came back in the World Series, did have that one big home run, um, you know, but also hit 222. And then in 2019, in the series they lost against the Nationals, he hit 150 with no home run, no RBI. And then in 2021, he had no homers against the Giants in that series, did have a couple RBI, and then, you know, did hit 167 in the NLCS, but did have a couple home runs. And then this year for the Rangers, he's been really good, didn't over 600 in that first, in the first three games, he hit over 300 against the, the Orioles. And then he's OPS, you know, over 800 with a pair of home runs in the ALCS. So, He's definitely someone that can help out the Dodgers. You know, it's one of those where Corey Seager is, you know, streaky by nature in the terms of when he's hot, he's hot, and when he's not, he's not. I think the big difference and and kind of what like Seager and Jock Peterson and, and guys like this in the past for the Dodgers that we miss, even if their overall numbers, you know, batting average, OPS, you know, all that stuff, even if they're not quite oh, like all worldly, when they did impact the game or the when they did get you know if they did go two for ten those two hits were home runs and 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 i think that's kind of what helps out with seager is that you know he did do damage even if he wasn't always hitting um and and you know should he still be in la i don't know if that's necessarily a fair like fair question because we don't know what his mindset was like you know if he wanted straight even money, the Dodgers would have had to offer like 400 mil in order to offset the tax difference between LA and, and Texas. Um, you know, would that, when like, would even money for even money, would he have even come back to LA? Like, you know, obviously playing for the Dodgers, being in the playoffs every year, that's, that's a draw. But for some guys, you know, that might not be all the draw that you want, or, you know, or, you know, Corey Seager had no choice in where he went. He was drafted by the Dodgers, came up with the Dodgers. That doesn't necessarily mean he liked, you know, L.A. or he liked, you know, everything that came with being a dog. You know, that doesn't necessarily mean that. And I'm not saying that he didn't. I'm just saying, like, we don't know what sometimes with these people when you're drafted to a team, especially if you're drafted out of high school or even drafted out of college, like, you don't have a choice. You know, your first – once you do make it to the majors, your first six years, you're pretty much – with that same organization unless you get traded or, or or let go and then when you're a free agent you have a choice to go wherever you want and and you know it might be a matter of Corey Seager told the Dodgers like you know I want 500 mil or that's the only way to keep me around for sure um and you know we've talked about how you know, the Dodgers got outbid and the Dodgers were never going to pay that much for Seager and, and that might be true like I don't know if the Dodgers would have given that much money to Corey Seager. It didn't seem like they would. They already had Trey Turner kind of, you know, waiting in the wings for another year. So it was a weird time. And, and you know, whatever the case is, like I said, I don't know if even money Corey Seager comes back to the Dodgers. And, and that's kind of where it comes down to is, you know, I and, and it might be why he doesn't get as much – Flack, at least from what I've seen from Dodger fans, as, as some of like you know, Granky went for the most money. He caught some flack for that from maybe some Dodger fans, uh, you know, other guys that have gone for big money or you know, whatever the case, maybe have caught some flack. I haven't seen too much flack for Corey Seager, but it's been a couple of years, so maybe there was, and I don't remember. But it always felt like all oh, the Dodgers didn't do enough to keep him, and and that might be true, but we also, you know don't know what he told the Dodgers or don't know what his mindset was. And, you know, maybe he was not trying to be in LA anymore and, and wanted to, you know, be out of that direct spotlight of, of Los Angeles, but we don't know, but, you know, could Corey Seager have helped the Dodgers the last couple of years? Yes, definitely. You know, obviously his bat in the lineup is, 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 you know, a, a presence and, and, you know, if they had him last year with Trey Turner, that would have been, you know, different. Maybe they had him this year instead of Miguel Rojas at shortstop. Yeah, things could have been different. Maybe we don't know for sure. We don't know if he wanted to be back, but uh, you know, we wish him all the best, obviously. And and we're definitely we're rooting for him, 
against the Astros. Uh, I I would assume maybe rooting for him in the World Series. I don't. Know. We'll, we'll kind of talk about rooting interest again in the next, you know, in the, in the last segment. But uh, you know, he's easy to root for, and you know, it, it's something that yeah, maybe we wish he was a Dodger, but again. Probably something that there was no control of in, in the sense of the Dodgers, where you know we really don't know what his mindset was. So NLCS is going to a game seven. Should you root for the Phillies? Should you root for the D-backs? Should you care? Does it matter? All that and more coming up. So make sure to keep it locked on Dodgers. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Check out the Game Time app. Right now, if you're looking for tickets, it's it's tickets sell out, but tickets are never really sold out. And with game time, that proves itself true. You shouldn't have to worry when buying tickets to your next big event because game time is there, the quick and easy way to find tickets, see where your seats are, and get the best price because they have their game time guarantee. So go check out the game time app right now. They got last minute tickets, they got flash deals, they got you know swipe here for to check out deals they got all that kind of stuff you can see what your seat looks like you can buy from all over the venue and you always get the lowest price guarantee event cancellation protection job loss protection etc there's all that and more with the game time app the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase so go check out the game time app right now and remember the game time guarantee means you always get the best price because if you find tickets in the same row and section for less Game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So you end up making some money. So go get the game time app right now. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets and download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. That's $20 off your first purchase with the code locked on MLB on the game time app. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on MLB. L O C K E D O N M L B for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. If you watch Locked On Dodgers or listen to Locked On Dodgers every day, you're an everyday, and we appreciate you. If you don't, uh, we would appreciate you if you did start doing that, or if you added at least a couple of days to your week. Uh, we're here all off season long. I know it's been a longer off season than a lot of us wanted, but we are here every weekday, Monday through Friday, for you for about 30 minutes. Uh, put us on for your commute. Put us on for your workout. Put us on when you're making breakfast. Whatever you want to do, check out Locked On Dodgers wherever you get podcasts and on. All right, so the NLCS is going to a game seven. The Phillies or the D-backs were impressive in game six, handling the Phillies, quieting that Philly crowd for the most part and winning five to one. Uh, they got to Aaron Nola early in the game, back-to-back homers by Tommy Pham and Lourdes Gurriel Jr. And then just kind of went from there. And now we go to a game seven. So it's the first time since 2004, that both championship series go to a game seven, uh, the first game seven in the history for the Phillies, which is interesting. Or maybe not that interesting. I don't know if you're interested in that. But, yeah, uh, we ta- I talked about last week, like, you know, rooting interest in general. And, you know, if, if people were like, oh, you can never root for a division rival being the Diamondbacks. But also – you know, there's a there's a school of thought of you always want to lose to the team that won the World Series, maybe to help justify your loss. Um, and I can see it that way, too. Like, if the Diamondbacks do make the World Series, you're like, okay, well, they beat us, but they also beat the Phillies, who also beat the Brain. Like, you know, and, and if they do have a chance to win the World Series, and they do win the World Series, we're like, oh, well, you know it was inevitable they were they were going to win it regardless and you know we don't know that obviously but it, it it's one of those schools of thoughts where i can see benefits to it of losing to somebody that ends up either making it or or winning it all um division rival it, it's kind of weird because you know a few years ago yeah like the dimebacks were not public enemy number one for the dodgers that's always going to be the giants but uh, you know, when this all kind of first started, the, this this run of postseason series, it was around the time where the Diamondbacks were kind of the Dodgers, you know, 
most fierce, I guess, in terms of the games. Um, sometimes, you know, they had the brawl, the big brawl. Um, and, and they had just had some stuff going on with them. And then they celebrated in the Diamond, in the Diamondbacks pool at Chase Field. And then the next time they had a chance to clinch, so they, you know, they had cops and, and horses guarding the pool. So, you know, there was a little bit of animosity towards the Diamondbacks. But then, like, that was back then. And now, I, you know, they were bad for a couple years. The Dodgers swept them in 2017. Then they were bad for a few years. Now they're back in the postseason. And I honestly don't have anything against this Diamondbacks team. They don't, you know, they have, obviously they haven't had any bad blood with the Dodgers. They're a fun young team. Like, if, if you take out the fact that they're in the Dodgers division and, you know, in some cases take out the fact that they beat the Dodgers, I mean, Corbin Carroll's fun, you know, Alec Thomas, who, like, for me specifically, you know, was on Team Mexico where you kind of learned about him in the World Baseball Classic and, you know, seeing him get sent down, come back up, have some big moments. He's, you know, he's fun. Zach Gallen is, you know, a, a interesting, fun guy and, you know, no issues with him. And, you know, Tori Lavola, I, I respect teams that stick with their managers a little bit just because, you know, it's such a volatile, you know, it's volatile and, probably doesn't have as big an impact as some people want, you know, so why fire a guy that you like and you think is good for your team, especially if you're going through a rebuilding type phase and, you know, they stuck with Tori Lovello and, you know, now he, they're getting rewarded and he seems to have a, a good pulse of that, that team and dugout. So, you know, I don't, there's no one on the D-backs I dislike. So I think, you know, they're easy to root for if you strip away the fact that they are in the same division as Dodgers. And for that fact, you know, the Phillies may be a little bit more polarizing. But for me, like specifically, there's nobody on the Phillies I really don't like. You know, I'm a fan of Bryce Harper, you know, Nick Cassianos, all those guys. I'm a fan of them, you know, hitting tanks, you know, with Schwerber and, and Cass well, Cassianos not so much this series, but Schwerber and Harper, you know, just – absolutely mashing the baseball you know some people have their feelings about Bryce Harper and maybe some of those other guys but you know I don't have an issue with them and you know the Phillies are fun uh, obviously you know Philly fans the the you know even though they were losing most of the game uh the, it was still pretty packed once the game ended they were still kind of on their feet and and being there for big moments so you know, the, the the Philly fans they had a bad rap but I think they've kind of turned the corner you know more encouraging there was some boost for Craig Kimbrough but you know, in my head, I was blowing Craig Kimbrough a little bit because I had to fly all the way to Philadelphia. If he had just closed out one of those games, uh, you know, maybe wouldn't be here right now. But regardless of all that, uh, you know, I'm not going to tell you who to root for. Uh, I think for me, I'm just want to enjoy a good baseball game at this point uh, and, and kind of see what happens. It's game seven. Game sevens don't come around very often. And uh, that's, you know, the, the best two words in sports is game seven. And, and we just got two of them on back to back nights. So. As a Dodger fan, I'm not going to tell you who to root for. If you do not always just never root for division rivals, then obviously your your mind, you know, it's easy to see who you root for. If you just have apathy, then you're not rooting for anybody. If you're rooting for former Dodgers, I think I think Kim, well, Kimbrough and Trey Turner are the only ones. So you'd root for the Phillies in that sense. Uh, but then you might not like Craig Kimbrough, so then you don't want to root for the field. You know, there's different ways to go about it. But I think all in all, you know, hoping for a fun game. Whoever wins, uh, we'll probably do the same thing on the next episode of Can the Dodgers Learn Anything from Them? There's probably things to learn from any team that makes it to the World Series. Sometimes it's just so improbable that maybe not. And, you know, it's one of those things, like with the Diamondbacks, like, I don't know if they did anything specific to get to this point. I think it just kind of everything worked out for them. Like their young guys hit, you know, Corbin Carroll against the Dodgers hit the ball, got on base almost every time, you know, their Ricky, our Ricky James Outman missed a fly ball and, and didn't get any hits, you know, it, it's, just, and obviously there are two different types of play, like, you know, Corbin Carroll, highly touted James Outman, not a late round pick, but you know, not a, not a game to put it saying like, you know, sometimes your rookies hit and sometimes your rookies don't. And sometimes your position, your role players hit and sometimes your role players don't. And sometimes your pitchers make it out of the first inning and sometimes they don't. So all in all, uh, if you're still watching, you know, 
enjoy a game seven. If you, you know, I know some Dodgers fans probably stop watching once the postseason ends, uh, but I'm a baseball fan in general. And also it's my job. So that's a little bit different, but either way, I probably still would watch definitely a game seven um, and really have no rooting interest for me, uh, but you might have your preference and uh, you know, we'll see what happens. And then we get to the world series and then we, maybe have a new rooting interest or we see how it goes there. Um, so that's all for today's episode. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen of the day every day. Make sure to check us out wherever you have podcasts and on YouTube. We come in every day or by listening or watching every weekday morning. You can tell your friends and family about us, your coworkers, anybody that likes the Dodgers, you can tell them Locked On Dodgers is there wherever you have podcasts and on YouTube every Monday through Friday. If you want to find us on social media, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Lockdown Dodgers. Jeff is on Twitter at Snydog. I'm at Vincent's 91. You can always send us your questions, comments, thoughts uh, on DM to Jeff or I. You can also send those via email, LockdownDodgers at gmail.com or via voicemail text at 323-863-LOCK. We are here every weekday morning, and we hope to be here with us. When you're in your car or if you're at home, tell your smart device by podcast, Locked on Dodgers. And remember, you don't have to agree. You just have to listen. Have a good one. Mm-hmm.